Hi everybody, it's Amanda from the PB team and I'm here to bring you our weekly Instagram live. I hope you're well, enjoying the sun. Um, let me know in the comments that you're watching, where you're watching from, we'd love to know and I hope that you are all good. Um, so today we've got a very special guest who's gonna be joining us on this live. Um, his name is Robbie Tompkins. He's one of the leading male manicurists in the UK. Um, he's got an impressive portfolio of clients that include Vogue, Elle, Mary Claire, Vanity Fair, just to name a few. And today he's gonna to be talking about how to make it as a session tech once coronavirus lockdown restrictions are lifted and we can get back to work. As well as talking a little bit about now trends and sharing some really solid advice through his career of how he's made it. Um, so really excited to bring him in. I Hopefully he'll be sending a request very soon. Yep, yeah, I'm just gonna bring Robbie in now. So he's with me. I'm really excited to have him. Really excited to have you guys watching as well. And um, he's just coming in. Hello everybody, he said hello. Hey Robbie. Hello babe, how are you? I'm all right, lovely, how are you? I'm good. I'm weirdly nervous um to, to come on um <laughs> and do a live with you. So no, I'm really excited. Oh, Thank you for asking. Me to come on. It's an I'm honor. every time we do one. I don't know why. Yeah. <laughs> we get the jitters. So weird, doesn't it? How much we can put ourselves out there on social media, but then the minute you go live, you're like, yeah, just uh, it feels quite exposing and stuff like that. But um, but it's really cool to be on actually. Um, yeah, we're it, so happy to have you. It's amazing how sort of um, I've really loved how um everybody is sort of really taken to social media in a different way mm -hmm. and people are running master classes and you know all of that sort of stuff um i think it's been really really cool watching um people find their feet and get the confidence mm -hmm. to sort of show their skills and share their skills and all of that so it's really cool i'm, I'm glad to be on and i hope that um you know i can be useful and and oh, say some cool. something to 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 help anybody who might be thinking a session because it is <laughs> uh it's a weird and wonderful beast the session world <laughs> But no, I think you're right. It's so great that the industry is helping each other at the moment to upskill in this time of closure and knowledge share because it's so nice. And plus, that's exactly what you're going to be doing today. Um, I told our audience a little bit about you and what you're going to be covering. But before I jump into the questions, I don't know if you want to introduce yourself a little bit more and um, just tell people a little bit more about yourself. Yeah. Um, so my name is Robbie Tompkins. Um, it sounds like a bit of a blind date moment, isn't it? I'm 40. <laughs> I'm from Swansea. Um, so yeah, I'm from Wales originally, um, a place called Swansea, which I think most people know, don't they? It's not yes. that small a place. Um, I've been living in London for like 16 years and I actually started nails really late in life. So it's not something that I've done forever. Um, I only started painting nails uh, whew, about six years ago. Um, I used to work in PR. Hello, my little bestie nails, Michelle Humphreys is on. I was going to say nails by MH is on, Michelle. Hello, babe. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, um, I really sort of came into uh, into the nail industry by mistake, by accident, obviously. I would say, yeah, by accident. Um, I used to work in PR and uh, sort of consumer PR, public relations, that is. Right, yeah. Um, and... I met a girl in, you know, in Ibiza, as all go good stories start, and um, she owned a nail art brand and asked me if I would go and do the PR for that nail art brand. And it was, I never really considered beauty or the beauty industry or anything. Um, but I went to work for the, for the nail art brand. Hello, Neymar. <laughs> um, I went to work for the nail art brand as their PR manager. I went to, I was lucky enough to go to London, New York and Paris Fashion Weeks with that brand. Um, and in doing so, um, quickly identified that there weren't many men doing nails in session. Yeah. Um, there's, and, and my PR brain was thinking, you know what? I think I could find a little niche here. Mm -hmm. And then my initial, my initial motivation was money, which um, I would find out a little bit down the road was actually, <laughs> uh, is a, is a, you know, anyone who works in session will know it's really unpredictable money wise and it ebbs and flows and there's no sort of, um, there's no standard at all. Um, but I started painting nails just as a bit of a hobby. Um, and actually, when I started doing it, and I don't know if you can relate, babe, it's, I, I loved art in school and really enjoyed my art class. It was one of my favourites. And then once you sort of, I went off to university and weirdly I studied as a nurse in uni. It's not something that I obviously oh, wow. carried forward. <laughs> um, but 
I just, I, I never, after school, I never sat and drew or did any art or sketched or did watercolours. It just fell away, you know, and you get mm. into the working world and and that sort of went into the background. And the minute I started painting nails, um, it really helped calm me down. Um, I've got a bit of a history of suffering with anxiety and that sort of mm. stuff. And once I painted nails, I really found that something in my brain would kind of shut down and the noise would get a little quieter. I don't know if anyone out there can relate, but um, that small, tiny little canvas. Hello to everyone who's joining. Thank you for, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Um, uh, it's something in my brain sort of, you know, I found it really calming. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, obviously I really enjoyed it. So I kept going and I would paint the nails of anyone who would sit still long enough. Then I started, um, I bought myself a little gel kit started offering five pound gel manicures in my lunch hour <laughs> to, um, to the girls yeah to yeah. the girls in the office um i actually started doing polished manicures first um for a fiver then i bought a gel kit and was doing gel manicures mm. um and it just kind of snowballed and through that i met some amazing nail techs and i assisted some really great people and i can talk on that in a little bit sort of you know some tips about how to get into session work mm -hmm. really does start with assisting people who already do session work yeah um and and having a bit of a long game approach um mm -hmm. it's not something i think you can just step straight into and um and sort of work full time in session straight off it's a bit of a slow burn um but through that as i said worked with some amazing people like sophie robson jenny longworth and um you know, sort of did my time as it were assisting. And then, um, yeah, randomly, I'm a massive believer in, um, you know, the universe. And, and I don't believe in coincidence. I think a lot, I don't know if if, if you agree, but mm. I think things happen for a reason. I'm one of those yeah, people that um, I think opportunities come when you're ready to receive them and um, you get given exactly what you need at any particular time. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a big believer in that. Um, and putting out good intentions, you'll get back mm. what, what you sort of want. Um, I met my agent, um, Premier Hair and Makeup, I'm signed with them, and I met, um, oh yeah, Neymar, it is a bit zen, <laughs> isn't it? Um, I love Neymar, NC Nails, hello lovely. Um, but yeah, it's, it's um, loads of weird things have happened along the way, which have landed me to where I am now. Um, mm. There hasn't been, I would say, a clear route into session. Um, like I went to a film premiere, long story short, my boyfriend works in a really cool restaurant and we get, you know, we're fortunate enough, he, li he li works in Leicester Square. So we get given loads of oh, wow. premiere yeah. tickets and we, yeah. we went to the premiere of Tarzan in Leicester Square and Margot <laughs> Robbie was there and all of this. Um, and inside the premiere, queuing to get a drink, I met my agent. Um, I didn't know oh, who yeah. she was or what she did. We were just chatting. Yeah. And um, Lindsay Crookshank, it was such a sort of one of those moments where you're like, oh, you know, you couldn't have made it up. <laughs> and we were chatting away and she asked what I did. And I said that I worked in PR, but I love doing nails and I hope to get into that one day. And I'm working really hard at it and assisting loads of people. And she said, oh, well, why didn't you come and see us? So I went to meet them and they gave me some overflow jobs for a year. And then a year later, um, they asked me to come in and literally put a contract on the table and said, wow. we'd like to sign you. And that that's was three amazing. years ago. So yeah. yeah, that's a micro kind of story <laughs> of how I got into session work. I think it's so nice. And actually, I think it's really common in beauty, but especially in nails, that people kind of fall into it. They don't necessarily yeah. leave school or college and think this is it. But then when they discover it, they love it. And then they yeah. stay in it. And actually somebody who was messaging said that she's 30 and she's only just started doing nails. And I don't think you're ever too old to start anything, oh God, no. to anything new. Um, so that is amazing. But I think what a lot of people would love to know is, like mm. you said, breaking into session work is like really hard. And obviously yeah. it's probably going to be a little bit harder when we come out of lockdown as well. Yeah. Where do you go about trying to find this work like you know are there websites you can check or is it about networking with the right people like where do you start yeah so it is a bit of a minefield it's a great question babe and it's something that um you know I'd love to say this is where you need to go and this is where you apply mm -hmm. um excuse me but it, there isn't really as I said a clear-cut route into it the way that I sort of got into it and the way that I would suggest you know 
I have no idea at the moment what is going to happen with Fashion Week in September. Yeah. But the sort of number one main route, I would say, to sort of begin to get your foot into session work is Fashion Week. It's a massive element of working in session. You know, um, for anyone that doesn't know, session work means that you usually are um, signed with an agency, although that's not a prerequisite. You can work in mm -hmm. session work and not be signed with an agency. It just kind of makes it a bit easier to get work because you have an agent. Um, along with that comes commissions and fees. But, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, we're lone rangers. We usually work on our own. It's really unpredictable, but that's one of the reasons I absolutely love it. But we mainly work with celebrities on editorial and fashion shoots and campaigns and fashion week are kind of the three main throngs of, mm -hmm. of being a session. So we don't work in a salon. We have all of our kit in our suitcase <laughs> and carry <laughs> everything in the kitchen sink around with us. Um, uh, we usually work on our own, which is, I would say, one of the things I loved about assisting was I always worked with someone. Mm. Um, whereas now I'm, uh, what you know, I work as a lead. It's called working as a lead manicurist when you do your own stuff. Yeah. Um, then you work on your own again, unless you have some assistance. But um, so yeah, the first thing, first thing first is, is to get onto social media. If you spot people that you like and you like their work and you like what they do, is follow them. Um, so, so Fashion Week, London Fashion Week runs February and September. Um, mm -hmm. And in the first case is the way that I sort of, I went about it was I went on social media and would look at who was posting around Fashion Week because we'll all start posting and doing stories and all of this. Follow some people, get in touch directly on Instagram um, to some texts and just say, are you looking for any assistance for Fashion mm -hmm. Week? It does usually mean you need to come to London or if you live in London. I know a lot of people come from outside of London and they'll get an Airbnb and share some rooms or stay with some friends or family mm -hmm. for that five, six days around Fashion Week so that you can drop everything because people will literally look for assistance an hour or two before a show sometimes. Wow. It's, yeah. that, it's wow. that quick and it moves that fast. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, that's, the, that's the first thing. And if you, um, you know, you're willing to get your hands dirty, get on your hands and knees, um, underneath the table, doing someone's hands between their legs while they're having their hair and makeup done at the same time, backstage and you're cramped. And <laughs> it sounds, it sounds, if you're used to working in a, in a salon that's maybe a little bit calmer, it sounds manic, but it's, it's phenomenal. It's so exciting. Mm -hmm. um, that really is a springboard into session work because, you know, I think around Fashion Week, everybody is on the hunt for good assistance. And there's so many shows and so yes, many teams. Um, that, you know, if you can just be willing and be able to, you know, move quickly if somebody needs an assistant, then, um, you know, I think, you, you, you know, that's, that's the first step in. And then mm -hmm. another route is to actually contact agencies directly. So, yeah. um, you know, when I started, I literally typed in hair and makeup agencies into <laughs> Google based in London. You know, I was that kind of naive. Yeah. I would just look for some. Um, and then say, who's there? Love Fashion Week is such experience. <laughs> uh, it certainly is so. Um, but yeah, I would contact agencies and say, I'm available. I'm around for Fashion Week. Um, do you have anybody? Um, yes, definitely not for the faint hearted. No, <laughs> um, definitely. Yeah. Do, do, you know, do you have anybody that's doing any shows? I'm available to, to be an assistant. And from there, what happened with me was I joined some Fashion Week teams as an assistant. I can't, you know, obviously worked with the lead nail tech, said, mm. if you ever need any help with any shoots, please let me know and I can, you know, come and assist you. Um, and it kind of went from there. And as I said, it mm. is a bit of a slow burn. So, um, you know, it's, it's, it's having, make sure, my, my main advice would be make sure you have some other source of income yeah. to help support you when you're starting out as a session tech. Yeah. Um, you know, there is the massive, massive debate of do we work for free or do we not? Um, okay. <laughs> Michelle Humphrey's Fashion Week's a nightmare. <laughs> Actually, this kind of leads on to what my next question was going to be, because um, uh -huh. we talk about all the different types of work, but Fashion Week in particular yeah. is something that people love doing. But obviously there's quite a lot of challenges around Fashion Week. And yeah. it's, it's things like the hours whether you're paid or you do it for free. And also, I guess it's the challenge of working in a fast paced environment where I guess like hairs and makeup is normally mm. prioritized a little bit more, isn't it? Over yeah. the Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what's your, you know, kind of advice on each of these things? And right. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, so yeah, um, I saw somebody ask, would you do normal polish or gel at Fashion Week? 99% mm. normal polish, babe. And then there is um, some gel brands are starting to explore Fashion Week, but only usually doing press on nails beforehand and then turning up at the show and sticking them on people's uh, models' fingers. Um, so yeah, usually nail polish. If you're super lucky, you get a brief beforehand, you paint the nails and you just show up. If you're not, mm -hmm. you're doing nail art with nail polish on models between their legs with a hairdryer blowing down on you. So, <laughs> um, that, High that's pressure. the stressy side, yeah. Um, yeah. So um, I suppose the first bit of, uh, to address is, you know, I don't know if you, was it was it the question of money? and, and... Um, Yeah, it was the hours, the money, and also I guess working in a very high pressured um, environment yeah it's very different to working in a salon or within your own business it's a very different kind of workplace isn't it yeah yeah so um you know like like i touched on before working at fashion week um some of the shows i think some of the early shows start at nine you usually arrive at a show three hours before so you're talking like 6 a.m start mm. um you know 6 a.m prompt bright eyed bushy tailed ready to hit the ground running paint <laughs> nails you've got all of your kit and all of your kit needs to be able to move with you to every model so mm. it's having everything either strapped onto a belt i don't use a belt really i take like a little square box i've bought from muji top tip they do some amazing you know, all of their storage <laughs> containers that oh, all slot into each other thing. Um, Muji is an amazing little store for anyone outside of London that um, does all these cool Japanese <laughs> things you never knew you wanted. Um, <laughs> um, uh, so yeah, the hours are really long, um, especially around Fashion Week. Some of the shows can be 9 p.m. again, three hours before 9 p.m. And then, um, you know, usually once the show is started, you're talking like, you know, five minutes and then it, it's all over. Mm -hmm. um, so the hours are quite, you know, definitely not a nine to five. Um, the conditions i'm gonna make this sound awful right but trust me i mean if you have you worked you must have been backstage i've been to a couple of shows backstage yeah. and it is chaos it, it, like, it has to be chaos, chaos. yeah <laughs> um be it be doing being part of the nail team i'm not gonna lie we do tend to have to fight to have a prominence backstage um mm -hmm. like like you said with hair and makeup does take um does take prominence so sometimes it can mean getting between someone's legs under a desk it, it does depend i worked on henry holland's show and he is all about nails so yeah. this yeah. backstage bit was amazing we had enough space it was it was a joy to work at there was mm. a really cool nail design he was talking about the nail design on his stories you know so you can go yeah. from that to then somebody who you know doesn't maybe have the space or the budget to have a big backstage so it, it can be like you said organized chaos but <laughs> again it's it's a really buzzy, exciting, manic three hours mm. um, for a show that may last like two minutes. And then there is this big question of money and it is something mm. that, you know, obviously I have an opinion on, but, you know, I need to be careful because <laughs> relax your hand, please. Yeah, that makes um, <laughs> I bet that's such a common thing that it's there. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a tricky one, lovely, because you know, opinion is divided as, you know, the big, the big question, should we work for free or not? Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, there isn't really a clear answer to it. Yes, I've worked on lots of shows for free. I, I can't lie. Um, you know, it, it sounds insane to anyone working in a salon and you think, well, surely a brand has loads of money. Surely they would have that to pay the nail team. You know, if, if mm -hmm. the model's walking down the runway and there is a nail look, surely they'll have budget. Um, and it isn't really as clear cut as that. Sometimes, you know, putting on a show can be so expensive, like insanely expensive. Um, and I have done shows where I've got paid, which is amazing. And I've done shows where you don't get paid. I've always, always tried if I get any money at all to pass it on to the assistants as well. Um, but I have had some amazing assistants that come and work for free and I try and get kit if we get sponsored. Um, but I think it's really important to sort of note, I've never done a show and accepted money and not passed it on um, or done a show where all my assistants are not paid and I'm paid. It's just yeah. not, not the way that I would work. Mm. Um, and I try and pay assistants when I can, if, if I get paid. But there's been lots of shows, even as the lead, I don't get paid. And, and I think a lot of people don't really talk about it. Mm. And when I was an assistant, I just assumed that the lead was getting paid and we weren't getting yeah. paid. And I just assumed that hair and makeup were getting paid and nails mm. weren't getting paid because we're, you know, um, maybe not as key in the look. 
Um, and over the years, I've discovered actually hair and makeup aren't getting paid either. It's a misconception, isn't it? Oh, it really is. Yeah. And, and, and it's a funny one. Money is, you know, even in, in our private lives, we just don't talk about it. It's so taboo. We're talking, mm -hmm. to, talking to my friends about salaries, you know, and how much, especially in session work, how much have you got paid for that campaign and how much have I got paid? And mm -hmm. it is just such a, a taboo subject in all senses, but um, never more so than in fashion week. Yeah. Um, people think you're getting paid when you're not. Um, you know, people assume that everybody else is getting paid for their show and I'm not. And then actually, um, you know, I've made some amazing friends in the session world and I'm a massive champion of let's help each other, you know, let's all support each other, which mm -hmm. COVID has really, really shown how the nail community, you know, I, I see people just bigging up each other's masterclasses on stories, despite having their own, yeah. are still supporting other people doing their masterclasses and stuff, you know, mm -hmm. um, and, and expanding a little bit, because I found the industry to be really guarded and quite, um, quite a private thing, session world, especially. I don't know, I can't speak for like salons and things, but within session work, because we are quite lone rangers and we do kind of yeah. work for ourselves, um, especially in terms of do you work for free or not? When that comes up, it is a big topic. And it's something, like I said, I don't want to wade into and have a big strong mm -hmm. opinion on. Um, I, I don't want to say whether I agree with it or not. It kind of is the way it is. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, like I said, it swings and roundabouts, especially if you can land big campaigns in session work, which is where you do an advert, mm. you'll get paid way more money than you ever would working in a salon. So it kind of, you know, it's what we're all chasing is those yeah. big money jobs that come in to offset the jobs where we maybe not get paid. So mm. I hope that helps. Yeah. I hope that. No, it does. Because it's like you said, um, with session work, it's not like it's a very consistent thing. It varies, mm -hmm. doesn't it? And I guess yeah. you've kind of got to go with it and go with the opportunities. Yeah. Because it is a big opportunity to be able to work on the fashion weeks. And I guess it does really help get your name out there and help yeah. you network with the right people, which yeah. is key. And it is, you know, it's one element of fashion week. You know, once you've done that, I think what fashion week gave me as well was the ability to work fast. Mm -hmm. work on work as part of a team but also on your own because you know when I have assistants come and join me on fashion week you have to be able to trust that when it's going mental somebody over the other side of the room is doing a really good job that you can leave do their thing that you don't have to keep checking on them and yeah. you know you really try and, and and I've got some amazing people that I work with but it gives you a sense of like real accomplishment fashion week mm -hmm. like nothing I've ever done before you know it can be super stressful but when they walk when the models walk down the runway and you've done the look um and I've done some really you know I haven't done a huge amount of shows I'm I'm a newbie in session you know so I'm not an expert at all I'm relatively new to the industry but I know the shows I have done you know when a designer comes up to you at the end and and you know I was lucky enough to do Richard Quinn who came up at the end was like, I loved it. I thank you so much for doing it. You know, you're like, oh my God, you know, it makes you feel yeah. amazing. Um, <laughs> but it, it definitely it is, Fashion Week is like a, the, a beautiful baptism of fire, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's full on, but everything that, um, you know, for every sort of little negative in it, the positive mm -hmm. far outweighs the negative, I think. Definitely. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about editorial work as well. Yeah. That's something a lot of now techs would, really love to strive to achieve and start doing and obviously you've done loads lots of big names like Vanity Fair, Elle how do you go about landing that kind of work yeah and how does that vary in comparison to fashion weeks actually when you work there in the environment yeah so with fashion week obviously you've got um you know you've got New York, London, Paris and Milan um and they work actually in New York, London, Milan, Paris is the order they work in. Mm. Um, but they usually happen, you know, they happen February and September. So that's just two parts of, of the year. Mm. Outside of that, again, the way that it sort of worked out for me, from my experience, was the people I was assisting at Fashion Week, occasionally there would be a job that would come up to assist them. Um, and mm. I would go along... Uh, and again, it's, it, it's a tricky industry because I was working in PR full time and I would have to ask for days off because it would drop in the day before a shoot. Someone would say, <laughs> from an agency, can you come and do this? Um, yeah. But yeah, the goal when I, after doing Fashion Week for a couple of seasons, then my next goal was, OK, I really want to do, I want to assist on an editorial. Yeah. Um, and again, editorials usually are unpaid. Um, so again that do you work for free, do you not? Um, mm -hmm. But like the likes of Marie Claire and, and all of those, you know, um, there isn't really a fee 
but um, it is completely different to Fashion Week in, in the sense of it's not as manic. This is a much smaller team, a lot more time to do the look. Um, well, most of the time. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's a team of 10 to 20 of you. It can be in a studio or on location. There's catering. It's um, it's really, really nice. <laughs> Michelle saying you're selling <laughs> session work. Um, but, yeah, shoots, editorials and stuff, you know, um, I really, really enjoy them because it's much more what I get from, from editorials is that sense of working as a team. Mm -hmm. um, that... Uh, you know because you do work closely with hair and makeup and you get a style brief and you work with a stylist and a photographer and um, the magazine editor will be there so I, I love that element because you know and then obviously you get to see your work with Fashion Week you can look online and see the show and whatever mm. but you actually get some tangible evidence of your work with editorial opening the first ever shoot that I did on my own for an Italian magazine called Amica um, and seeing my work in, in print was just oh, the best feeling ever. Um, yes. And then from there, it's gone on to, um, I don't know if anyone remembers, I did a really goofy post last, I think last year or the year before, where I did my first Marie Claire cover with Gabrielle Wilde, the actress. And um, I went into Sainsbury's and I got all of the <laughs> Marie Claire and I put them all the way along the, the magazine back <laughs> on like, two rows and then I was like ah you know and yeah. I did this stupid story where but the most proud moment of her and I, it was just incredible to see that um was yeah. was great I guess with editorial work it's kind of building your portfolio isn't it as well and it is that recognition in there of that credit and I think what's interesting that you said is because you said sometimes on fashion week you don't get the brief before, you kind of get the brief there and you're good to go. Yeah. Is it common that most of the time with editorial shoots, you will get the brief beforehand so you can kind of... Um, um, hardly ever, actually. You get the brief when you get there. When you get there. Um, yeah, I would say with Fashion Week, you usually get the brief before. Yeah. Um, so Fashion Week, but it could be like the afternoon before. So that's yeah. when it goes really oh, peaked yeah. on and you've got to, you know, paint... I'm sh Michelle is online, um, my bestie, one of my nail besties, who really helps support me um, and is really free and open with how they, you know, she's one of the people in the industry I've worked with that has been so open about how it works and sharing her expertise. Mm. Michelle Class is another amazing girl, um, a friend of mine who, you know, we do share about tips and tricks and how, you know, how each of us is doing and we often get actually put forward for the same job and I'm super happy if she gets it over me. It's really bizarre. That's another sort of really weird <laughs> element when you make friends in session work. You, mm. you get pitted against each other for the same job, um, yeah. or for the same celebrity Absolutely. and stuff. That was one um, of my question was, was, is there rivalry in it? Because I guess you must see people that you've worked with before or... Oh, or yeah, time, yeah. Right? I mean... It must be quite weird. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'll come back onto that in a second. But, um, yeah. you know, with... Um, with editorial you will just get the brief first thing in the morning unless it's celebrity occasionally that that you know because they might have gel or acrylic or something on their hands yeah. where they'll message ahead and say can you do this on set but the majority of the time with editorial you turn up with your full kit um and you know you 99% of the time it's nail polish rather than gel for editorial because yeah. the model needs to be able to take it off at the end of the day and, and do another shoot the next day um but yeah, it is massively different doing an editorial to Fashion Week. And I love both of them for for what they are. I, I sat out last season of Fashion Week, actually. There wasn't an opportunity that came in that I thought um, that that was something I wanted to do. And it was actually quite nice yeah. taking a season off. And I'd love to do a show again this this season if the opportunity came up. Um, but bringing, bringing it on to rivalry, you know, I've, <laughs> I've, I've also... Um, I've done a show one season and then one of my besties has done the show the next season. Um, and it's, I suppose it's having that belief in yourself that, you know, that there's room in every, for everybody in this industry, which I truly think there is. Mm. Um, you know, I'm working, I, I was working with a celebrity before, um, before lockdown that somebody else was doing. And I've had a job when somebody, and you know, somebody else has done the job for a while has had a holiday or, you know, it's, it's, it is one of those strange things. And I'm sure even like, you know, people who work in salons and stuff like that, 
it can be quite fickle sometimes, you know? So mm -hmm. You could have a client for a while and then one time you can't do them and they just go with someone else. <laughs> yeah. um, but then for every time that happens, then I get a new client. Um, mm. But, you know, if, if I lose out on... When I first started, I used to get really upset if I was op optioned for a job and an option for anyone that doesn't know. For example, if like Marie Claire were doing a shoot on Monday, um, somebody from the magazine would get an option in. So they'd have options for hair, options for makeup, options for nails, which means they'll contact a few agencies, they'll get three nail artists available who are on option. And then you get um, marked out in your diary. So my agent would say, right, I've optioned you for a job on Monday, you can't do anything else. So it's almost like preserving you. Right. Yeah. And then I, can, I used to get really excited and I'd you know, really focus on it and be like, I'm so excited, I'm doing Marie Claire on Monday. <laughs> and then on Sunday night, they'd say, sorry, you're released, they've gone with someone else. Oh, yeah. And then you like, oh, it's crashing, yeah. you know? Oh, yeah. And you feel like you've missed out, especially when you get option to do a big celebrity, um, you know, and, and you get really excited and I used to pin everything onto it. And then, um, mm -hmm. I've just learned that, um, that, you know, if somebody else has got it, it's not personal. You know, I, I really don't believe someone's gone, oh, definitely don't have Robbie, we hate him, you know, get someone else. It can be that the photographer likes to work with that person. It can be the celebrities ask for that particular person. It can, it can mean nothing at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's having a bit of a, I definitely think in session work, you need to have a little bit of a thick skin and not mm -hmm. take things personally because yeah, it, it's it. You've got to roll with the punches with it, you know. And it's over the years I've, I've realised that it isn't personal. And for everyone that I don't get something more exciting, I, I you know, like I said, with the I believe in the universe will um, give me something better, you know. But it took a while of, of of disappointment and heartbreak when I used to be like, oh, they've not gone with me, and um, you know, they they did they didn't choose me. I'm not good enough, you know. That's something that I'm riddled with, and it's something I have to work with on a daily basis. I'm not good enough in this industry. I'm shit at nails. I, mm. I should, I should, you know, I don't have a place in session work. That voice can be so loud sometimes, um, but it's it, it's fighting against it and just being like, okay, yeah. you know, you've been doing it for this long, Robbie, and no mm. one's sacked you yet, so there must <laughs> be, you know, you you must yeah. be able to do an okay job. <laughs> I think that's so true. I think so many people struggle with that and probably have those thoughts from time to time. And it's just a case of sort of picking yourself up and keep going because yeah. you know that you're good at it. It's just it's just the nature of the industry, isn't it? Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you, Robbie, actually, as well, especially with Fashion Week work and editorial work, how important is your attitude when you're on these kind of sets and these scenarios to landing future work? Oh. You know, if you've got a good can-do attitude and you really get stuck in, are you more likely to get stuff booked in in the future? Mm. What a fab question. Um, <laughs> and, you know, not to, not, not to be like, oh, name dropping and stuff. I, I was lucky enough last year to do... Um, to be asked to be a columnist for Scratch magazine, and um, which was an amazing experience and really taught me a lot because every month um, I was asked to write about a different topic rather than choose it myself. Mm -hmm. And I wrote quite a bit extensively about this in one of my articles about um, how to get on the in session world. And I'm not claiming to cure cancer, right? There's people who could <laughs> probably do nails a lot better than I can. Um, and there's a lot of us in the industry, especially around session work, because a lot of people want to get into it. It is really exciting. You get to meet mm -hmm. amazing celebs. You get to do a bit of travel. But that said, if you go on set and, and people don't like you and you've got an attitude and you are, um, you know, if you're a bit moody or you turn up late, you know, like turn up mm -hmm. late is like an absolute no-no in session work. It happens, you know, it, of course mm -hmm. it happens. But um, having a positive attitude on set is the... I would say number one thing that will get you rebooked, yeah. you know, because editorial, as most people will, you know, anyone on here who's, who does editorial, you know, it's the nude nail, the curse of the nude nail, you know, you do <laughs> occasionally do some exciting stuff, but it's, you know, are you a nice person to have on set? You know, can you get on with everybody? Um, are you enthusiastic? Do you, do you bring a bit of energy and a smile and, and some positive vibes to set? Um, there is nothing worse what, wherever you work than working with someone who's pissed off. Oh, sorry. Who's, no, you know. Don't worry. We don't uh, need to say worse on these lives. Do but not just, worry. <laughs> you know, some, someone who's down and negative and moody from the get-go or, you know, or bitching about someone gossiping yes. all day. It's toxic, you know. And on a set, you know, when all you've got really as they start to shoot is your phone 
or one or two other people that you've never maybe met before, that common thing that is easy to talk about is someone else. Mm. Um, and I hear it quite a lot. And, 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 you know, I certainly wouldn't want to work with anyone. If they're talking about someone, they're going to be talking about me. Yeah. And, and, and it's that thing that people go, oh, no, I don't want to book again. So it's, it's that positive attitude. I, I can't stress enough. If, if you're going to, you know, look into session work and start assisting is bring, bring your A game and, and turn up on time. Um, it may sound like simple, but turn up on time and, and just see what you can bring to a yeah. shoot, not what you can take from it. Because when people show up purely just to tick a box um, or, or massage their ego or, um, you know, or, or anything else, like that's one of my main things is what can I bring to, to a show at Fashion Week? You know, can I bring some energy? Can I bring some love? Can I help somebody who's new and get people on board, um, help a newbie? Like, I, you know, when I was brand new, I got opportunities. So I really try at Fashion Week to have a mix of you know, long, long people who've assisted for years, but someone, you know, I've had a few people on my team that work in a salon, never done fashion week before, but are so lovely on Instagram. And we've had such a great chat. I'm like, brilliant. Come and join my team, you know? Mm. Um, let, let, let's, let's see how it goes. It, it's, it's mental. And I've had some of the best assistants who've never done it before because they're just running around chatting to the models, being happy and just yeah. energetic, you know? Yeah, it's amazing how much of a positive attitude can make mm. you really memorable. And I think people underestimate that sometimes. Yeah. Actually, your personality and your demeanour are as important as your skills and your experience. Yeah, um, definitely. But I also wanted to ask you about celebrity work as well, because for so many people, to be able to do a celeb's nails and see them done is like holy grail, isn't it? Yeah. Um, but what's the best way to land celebrity clients? Like, are you better to go through an agency or work with a brand and become an ambassador and do it that way? Like, what's the best route to kind of build up that kind of clientele? I think the best route and um, the, the best route that I found was, um, you know, again, it, it's it's through working with someone and assisting someone and contacting agencies. You know, obviously, if big celebrity work is going to come in, the agencies are going to give it to the people they've signed. Mm. um and that they have in their books um that's not to say you know i've had some amazing opportunities with celebrities through people i've networked with who mm. again like we just talked about you know if if you're positive and you've got that can-do attitude and flexibility and you're upbeat and you're trustworthy and you can get somewhere on time um you know if i got offered a celeb job um and people you know some of the girls in the industry my friends have rung me and said I can't do this celebrity, is there any chance you can do it? I've got something else on, can you step in for me? Then that that is a route in. Um, again, there's no real, there's no real sort of textbook way of working mm. with celebrities, but the majority will either be doing a shoot, you know, I've, I did some people for the BAFTAs and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and some people around Fashion Week, because a lot of celebs have their pro hair and makeup done to then go and sit in the front row. Um, and you go to their hotel, but it is kind of the holy grail and it is amazing working with mm. celebrities. Um, it can be super stressful as well, yeah. but, it, but it is, you know, obviously <laughs> you get to see the most amazing people firsthand and you're touching their hands and you're, yeah. you know, I've worked with some people <laughs> that I've seen in movies and, and then the next thing I'm sitting doing a pedicure on them in a, in a <laughs> hotel for them to go and work the yeah. red carpet and it turns out they're all just normal people like us. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's usually it is through building that network, assisting some people, showing that, you know, you're trustworthy and that you're reliable. Um, because if you're going to give one of your clients to somebody else, you need to know, especially with celebs, that you're going to be represented properly and you're trustworthy and you'll show up on time because not showing up or being late when someone's got red carpet, it's really stressful for them. I mean, mm. I, I can't imagine what it must be like to get glammed up and walk in front of the world's press yeah, and be scrutinised on your look. So you want to... You want your team to be on time and waiting for you and, and, mm. and quick and get you ready. And um, so, yeah, I'm sorry I can't be more. No, that's direct. been really helpful. I guess as well, it'd be interesting to know is there anything kind of etiquette wise when you're working with celebrities that are like the best do's and like the worst don'ts? Yeah. You know? So do not, please, God, don't ask for a selfie. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I thought that might come up. <laughs> as, as alluring as it might be, and I have done it, you know, you, you play it by ear. Um, but yeah, sort of asking for an autograph or a, a quick selfie or something is, is an absolute no-go. Um, but it's just treating them like, like real people. I always try and treat a celeb like a mate and just show up and, and you know, don't be like, hey, babe, the minute you see them, um, <laughs> the first time that yeah. you see them. But 
it's keeping your cool and um you know trying to treat them like a, a like a client you know just like mm. a client that you would um you know practice the same diligence with your kit and your cleanliness and you know and and and, and also you know if you need to get a job done it's trying to you know i'm sure there's you know there's, there's been horror i i know of people that have done celebrities hands as they are sleeping in in a hotel room um you know and and they have to do it so gently as not to wake them up because their nails need to be done before you know this this is actually this oh actually God. this actually happens um i've never heard a story like that it's really taken me aback oh yeah 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 <laughs> i know more than more than um one celeb who has their nails done while they sleep but um Oh, wow. Um, it sounds hilarious, but you know, when you when you work with some big celebrities and you see what their schedule is like, it's yeah, insane. Because yeah. it's work it's work for them. It's not I'm getting my nails done. Mm. It's actually work. Yeah. So they're just like, I need to sleep, so can you just do it while I'm sleeping? Um I've not had that, but I have been to people's homes and, and done their nails while they're eating pizza and <laughs> it, um you know, because again it's a tick in the box, it's work, it's not a treat, yeah. it's not a it's not a therapeutic treatment. So um but yeah, just be yourself, really, and, and try and be confident. Take big deep breaths before you go in if, <laughs> if you're nervous and scared of what they might yeah. be like. But once you've done a few, you realise it's just a client and they want you to be you, mm. you know? Who's been your favourite celebrity to do nails on? Or can you not say? <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll give you some names because you've asked. I don't, I don't walk around saying, guess who I've done? <laughs> um, I, I was lucky enough, I did Kate Moss for oh, um, the cover of Love magazine. Amazing. Absolutely phenomenal, really done to earth. Not what I thought she would be like. Mm. I was super scared and she walked in and just instantly was like, oh, for God's sake, everyone stops staring at me. Let's get this done. <laughs> Um, um, and was really done to earth, not what I thought at all. Mm -hmm. um, and Liv Tyler, I've done quite a few times, and Absolutely. she's just a dream and really, really gentle, lovely, but swears like a trooper. Um, <laughs> and Amanda Seyfried, I did for the Mamma Mia 2 premiere. And again, oh. she was just one of those people I was like, oh, you know, because she's in Mean Girls, for God's sake, you know, it's yeah, like one of, my, <laughs> one of my favorite films. Um, and, and to, to go and I got booked last minute to do this. I didn't have time to get super scared. It was like two hours before the premiere. Um, but what an amazing woman. And, and um, you know, I got to see a side of her. She was so anxious to go and walk, walk the red carpet. And you think, wow, you know, how, how are you anxious like that? It really helped me with my anxiety to see someone like that be nervous about, you know, massive actress to, to be nervous about doing that. Um, and I just started working with Paloma Faith before lockdown as well. And she's everything cool. you would dream Paloma Faith would be like, you know, um, yeah. she's, she's just such a, a real kooky, amazing, lovely lady and a great <laughs> mum. Um, so yeah, a real nice cross section of people that I've worked with. Um, it's, it's been amazing. Yeah. And just to round it up on this last question, yeah. if you could have gone back in time and told yourself when you were starting out, like a really good piece of advice, what's the one thing you wish you had known before you started out in this <laughs> session work um uh it would have been to how do i do this my boyfriend's been watching drag race from season one and rupaul <laughs> rupaul is all about he gets a photo of someone when they're like four and he says what would you tell your four-year-old self when they have these <laughs> yeah. big these big cryy moments of don't give up and yeah um <laughs> i love rupaul yeah but it, it, i think it would be if, uh, right at the beginning was to um, believe in yourself a bit more because I, I thought I was just you know it was all a coincidence and a fluke when I was getting all of these jobs and and getting options for stuff so it would be you know just believe in yourself um, I, I'd say to have a have a bit of a plan B for money from the get-go so have mm -hmm. something in the background that will bring in a little bit of cash you know whether it be private clients I still work in PR mm -hmm. um, and I've also started doing some amazing nail things a master class I'm working on which I'll talk about in a second um, with with one of my friends um, so it would be to have that and and I think the last thing would be you know don't take things personally because I really did when I didn't get a job when um, you know I, I lost out on something I really took things to heart and it really hurt. Mm. Um, so it would be to just, just roll with it and stuff mm. like that. I don't want to say toughen up because <laughs> I, I, I went, you know, I learned, I would say, or maybe learned the hard way, but I wouldn't change it. 
you know what I mean? Yeah. I, what, I, what I try and change is that if somebody, if somebody brand new asks me, you know, how much did you get paid for that job? And what did, you know, what did you do for Fashion Week? And did you do this? Is to just be as honest as I can with that individual, you know? It's, mm-hmm. it's not for me to broadcast it live, what I earn and all of that. But if somebody asks me one-on-one, then it's trying to just give whatever knowledge I can and stuff and to give people a bit of an insight. Not to save them from, you know, some of the woes I went through, but to give it a bit more of a real... Yeah. what it's really like you know then it's rather just this glam and I'm flying around the place you know because <laughs> it does happen but mm. yeah no I think you've been so wonderfully frank about the nature of the industry and how you get the work and the highs and the lows and mm. I think for anybody who is interested in anybody new who's starting in it or anybody who's been in now for a while and want to take it to the next level it's really valuable to know this real advice because then mm. it helps to manage their expectations and let them know that these things are normal when they happen. Yeah, so- and, and that's a great one that you mentioned, expectations, you know. For me, expectations are, um, are literally like, will always lead me down a dark path, you know. Yeah. If, if I go into a shoot expecting to get something from it, expecting to get, you know, um, massive big pat on the back. And if I put expectations up here, I'll always be let down. It will never be as good as I want it to be. Mm-hmm. The shoot will be shit. Um, the team will be rubbish. You know, it's, if I just go with that kind of, you know, again, what can I bring to this? And just, I wonder what today is going to be like and try and remain curious about stuff. Yeah. Then it's always going to turn out brilliantly. But when I go into it with big expectations, pff, you're just setting yourself up for a fall, I think. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And just before we close off, Robbie, I know you mentioned a little bit about your masterclass, and I'm sure people who are listening would love to know a little bit more about it. If you want yeah, to so um, I, me and Michelle Humphrey, um, uh, if you don't follow her, definitely go and give her a follow. Um, if you don't She's know her, she, she is one of the most amazing nail artists I've known. Um, such a great girl in the industry. But we've been collaborating on um, MH Masterclass series. Um, and we spent quite a lot of time. Um, we've done a lot of training around Zoom. So we host our Masterclass on the Zoom platform. Um, and we actually upgraded and we ran it on a webinar, um, which creates a really kind of interactive nail experience is what we try and do. I think Kay saying it was so much fun. She was on our last one. Um, where we have split screens, I actually present it um, and intro everybody. Michelle does the nail art. We are looking at ones where I'll come into it as well. But our next one is Celebrity Nail Looks, which is next Wednesday. Um, and we're going to show you, Michelle's going to show you how sh- to do um, encapsulation and the look that she did for Dua Lipa on Dua Lipa's latest album cover. Um, She'll also show you um, a really amazing design that she did on Ella Air and then another one on Katy Perry. So you get to um, to see her do those um uh, as i said it's really interactive we, we run polls throughout where people can click and answer things and we show you the results yeah. live cool. um so yeah it's, it's one thing that me and michelle have worked really really hard on for weeks and maybe not late to the party but it, we've you know michelle's had fiber installed to make sure you can see really crystal <laughs> clear her nail art cool. um so yeah our next one's wednesday the 28th next week early bird tickets are on sale um and it's been exciting. It's been it's been great learning something new, um, and also, like I said earlier, watching loads of other nail techs who are amazing at what they do, but are suddenly mm-hmm. starting to find their self worth and go, "I do amazing opal nails." You know what? I'm going to charge people a little fee, and I'm going to teach people how to do open na- opal nails or whatever nail design, French and stuff like that, and and actually find your self worth and start saying, "I'm good at mm-hmm. this. I can I can pass something on, make a bit of money, and we're all supporting each other, which is great." Um, so yeah, that, that's something that we're working on and it would be lovely to see anyone on there. Um, our ticket, the ticket link is in me and Michelle's bios on Instagram. Um, and we've also created, um, a really cool, it's MH20 is a code where if you book a ticket, you can get 20% off. Um, so yeah, um, we'd love to see people join us and have us there. (laughs) Hey Mish. Sounds really exciting, Robbie, but, um, Thank you so much for joining us today and thank you for everybody who's been watching if anybody does want to watch this back we are going to be putting it up on pb's youtube page so you can always go back listen mm, to cool. Robbie Tully's advice again <laughs> um but thank you so much robbie it's been really great talking thank to you for today. having me babe no it's been great and i hope you're all safe and well in lockdown and just to let you guys know we'll be back next week with more education and next friday we're going to be joined on instagram by 
Tammy Kozlowski from NAS Salon, and she's going to be talking a little bit about how Maze. to make your social media content in lockdown really great and how to nail it when you can reopen and the right stuff to post, which should be really interesting. Um, but thank you so much, Robbie, and thank you everyone for joining. Yeah. Have a lovely day. Thank you, darling. Then. And hopefully I'll see you in the future soon, Robbie. We'll yeah, it'd be a pleasure. Sort of well, I'm only around the corner from you, aren't I, babe? So I'll just I pop over for lunch time. Come to our office, you know, yes. when we can all stop socially distancing. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, okay, thank, thank you, so darling. Much. Have a lovely day. Thanks, Bye. everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.